Good morning. I hope everyone grabbed their communion and their palm branches that are shaped into crosses on the way in. Uh, thank you to Lisa Vanderlinder, who continues to do this as her ministry. I came this morning, I saw that she had done it. I came this morning, and there they were tied to the, the door of the church. So thank you, Lisa, for uh, your continued work in doing this. I, it was something she used to do with her mom. Her mom had taught her, and she continues to do it, and she delivers them to the churches around the community. So we're not the only ones who benefit from this joy and this craft. So we're thankful for her and for that gift. We also have our Palm Sunday brunch following worship today downstairs. You are all invited to come and eat some wonderful sandwiches and drink some soup and partake together and continue to have communion downstairs. So we hope that you will come and attend that. This Wednesday is the final of the Lenten lunch, that the Lenten devotion we have been doing um, throughout this season, and so we are, you are invited to attend and join us on Wednesday at noon. Uh, bring a lunch, bring a friend, but just show up. Uh, we would love to have you. Uh, also this week, we have services at here at 7 p.m. on Monday, Thursday with the United Methodist Church, and so we hope that you will attend that. And on Friday, we will be doing the services at the Catholic Church at noon so we also hope you will attend that and then Easter Sunday is just around the corner and uh, we will have no coffee hour that day to give you time to enjoy what I'm hoping is going to be beautiful spring weather uh, also the last announcement I have is just um, the youth group that is the sixth graders through the twelfth graders will be meeting on Sunday April 16th to go bowling so if you would like to go bowling, please let me know. Please let me know if you're going to bring a friend so we can sort of get a count and make sure we all have enough cars to transport everybody over there. Uh, so that is just a heads up to let me know. Those are the announcements I have. Uh, hopefully everybody can hear me today. I heard last week it was a little muffled. So I will start with what I started to say last week in case you didn't hear me, which is if you would like to perform any special music, I am more than welcome to accompany you, and or you can do a solo, duet, um, just let me know, and we'll set something up. Second, our last choir rehearsal is this Wednesday at 5 o'clock, so I hope to see my choir members there. And uh, this is a joy, I know everybody wants to know the gender of the baby, so we are having a boy, and we shot off cannons yesterday. <laughs> Excellent. Are there any other announcements that people have? Let us then continue at, in our service together with this reading, Blessed are the Rejected, a benediction for a blessing on Palm Sunday written by Kate Bowler. Blessed are those who have learned to walk in the light of your presence, Psalm 89. O oh God, you are interrupting us with eternity once again. Open our hearts and our minds and our eyes and our ears to hear what you have to teach us. On this Palm Sunday, time is marked as one small donkey plods towards Jerusalem, one with a face set like flint, feet almost grazing the ground, walks forward toward the eastering of all sorrow, not in the power of horses and swift victory, but in small, steady steps toward the mystery that through suffering, healing comes, and through shame, dignity is restored, that through the cross, the powers are disarmed, and death done away with forever. Blessed are all those walking forward into the great small work they do, in hospitals, homes, grocery stores, classrooms, churches, cubicles, and blessed are we joining the crowds, waving the palm branches to shout ourselves hoarse, Hosanna, Save us, save our world. God have mercy, Christ have mercy, Spirit have mercy, amen. Friends, let us join in body and or in spirit as we say together our mission. Welcoming, be compassionate, be you bravely, be community. Let us join together in our call to worship. Look, 
your ruler is coming to you, mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the fowl of the donkey. Hosanna in the highest heaven. I always am hesitant to shout our loud hosannas because I think we do it very much like shy adults rather than with the joy of a toddler. Toddlers are much better at waving and shouting than we are. So every time we say Hosanna, I want you to call on your inner toddler. <laughs> call, call, call them up to the present to shout with these joys and Hosannas. I thank you all for the offerings. God does not require our sacrifices, but it calls us instead to respond in gratitude for all that God has given to us. These gifts that we joyfully offer to our Lord for the sake of his son, Jesus the Christ, as we sing together this hymn of dedication. Let us now join together as people who remember that we have sinned in a variety of ways we come together communally to confess these sins. O oh God, you have searched after us when we have gone far from you, yet we confess that we have become consumed with our own affairs. We seldom pause to listen for the wind in the trees or hear the happy voices of children. Sometimes we feel that the burdens of the world fall entirely on our shoulders, and we have been slow to put our trust in you or to cooperate with others. When we take ourselves too seriously, remind us that we are all only human. Make us patient with our mistakes, even as we are willing to forgive others and remind us that we are also precious, not because we are good, but because you have accepted us and called us to be your very own. Amen. Friends, remember that God is gracious and God is forgiving because God does not desire us to sit and wallow in our brokenness, but instead God cleanses us and makes us new. So re receive the entire forgiveness of your sins and walk in that newness of life for the sake of Christ, we pray. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Peace be with you.
Amen. Please be seated. So I wanted to talk to our youth today for just a moment about uh, the Palm Parade. If you've ever watched an award show like the Oscars on television, we know that when people come into those big awards, they lay out this red carpet. We lay out that red carpet any day, so I will always invite you to walk this runway like you're on your way to grab some sort of award. I will always be open to that. But the red carpet is the way, right, to let people know that the pathway they are walking is very significant. So the red carpet is this tradition. So today we hear of a palm parade. Now when Jesus entered on this donkey, there was no pathway laid out like a red carpet for this king to enter. But the people began to shout, and the people laid down the carpet. They laid down their cloaks, and they laid down their palms, and they waved, and they shouted to praise Jesus as he walked in. Now, at the same time, there was another parade taking place in the city of Jerusalem, but it was on the other side of town. And it was really about the Roman rulers, the people that were oppressing everybody at the time. And they were coming in on horses, and they were coming in very triumphantly. And then all these other people were overwhelming Jesus. Jesus, because Jesus had been a good ruler to them. He had taken care of the people. He had healed them. He had made sure they were safe and protected and had what it is that they needed. And the other people had never done that for them. So they weren't there to welcome him in. They weren't there to shout their hosannas. They weren't there to lay their cloak for this ruler. So I want us to think about that in the ways that we can continue to shout our hosannas and welcome Jesus into our lives, remembering that Jesus loves and cares for us still, and Jesus still provides us with what we need. And so today is that day that was so powerful and so overwhelming that we contend continue to mark it and to honor it and to relive it. And so I want you to use these palms that, that you have been given this week to show God's love and healing in this world. And so I'm going to ask you to wave them and joyously shout them to everyone that you meet to tell them about how much Jesus loves them. And with that, we'll invite Jenny forward with our reading today. Hear the prayer of illumination. Triumphant Jesus, you entered the city to shouts of Hosanna and reclaim God's holy house for God's purposes. Give us a heart for your worship and passion for your justice. Amen. The first testament this morning is Psalm 118, verses 25 through 29. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light, buying the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. The words of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And from Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 17, here are the words of the Lord. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached near Bethage, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, just say the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the fowl of the donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and they put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. 
and a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went ahead of him were following them, and they were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, saying, Who is this? The crowds are saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Then Jesus entered the temple and drove out all who were selling and buying in the temple, and he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, and you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he cured them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the amazing things he did, and heard the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David. They became angry and said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? Jesus said to them, Yes. Have you never read out of the mouths of infants and nursing babies you have prepared praise for yourself? He left them and went out to the city of Bethany and spent the night there. Friends, these are the words of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, while I do love a temper tantrum Jesus, I am not going to preach on that today. Today, I instead decided not to write a sermon, but to read to you a monologue written by Greg Fireson called The Not-So-Triumphant Entry. Entry. It's a monologue from the perspective of Jesus, and I just thought it was a different way to look at this story to try to imagine what that was like to enter through Jerusalem, through that city gate, as though we were Jesus. And so I want you to think of that and to imagine that as I read these words. The shouting has not stopped, and neither has the ringing in my ears. The crowd continues to grow larger as we come closer to Jerusalem. And some of the newcomers have come in and joined in on the shouting as well. The ones toward the back barely even see me. It even while I sit on this cult, and yet many direct their praises to me, reciting from the book of Psalms, they shout, Hosanna to the son of David, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. And I nod and I smile because they're right. I am the long-awaited Messiah, the son of David, and as God's son, I have come to do their will. I could not honestly say I'm unhappy with this welcome. I know that it was prophesied to be this way, that they would say these things about me, that they prepare this large, excited crowd whose joyful shoutings send shivers down my spine, and it feels good especially as I remember the reception given to me in my hometown of Nazareth. They took great offense there to claim that my authority came from God, and it was made quite clear that I was not welcome among them. But today, among this crowd, I am welcome, if only for a moment. It would be difficult not to feel joyful at seeing so many friendly and familiar faces among this jubilant crowd like Bartimaeus up ahead yelling at the top of his lungs, there is a man of faith. We found him begging at the roadside as we left Jericho, or, or rather he found us. And as we drew closer, he was shouting my name loud enough to carry above the noise of the crowd. And the crowds tried to push him away, but he persisted shouting, son of David, have mercy on me. And I had the disciples bring him to me, for I could not ignore his plea. What is it you want me to do? I asked him. His answer was simple, yet it radiated his faithful determination. He said, I want to see. That request cost him. It cost him the privilege of speech in the synagogue. But he had seen the light. And later, when I told him I was the Messiah, he believed me without any hesitation or doubt. If only there were more who would see the light like him. 
I can't help but chuckle a little as I watch my 12 disciples strut around like peacocks yelling as much and as loud as the crowd, informing everyone to listen where it is appropriate for them to discard their robes. I'm sure they'd be doing cartwheels by now. My poor friends, if only you understood what is to come. But I will explain it again later, and today I will enjoy in your laughter and your merrymaking. Here is that Samaritan fellow I healed of leprosy. He was with nine others, and I healed them all, but he is the only one who returned to thank me. I was not angry with the others, but I guess it no longer surprises me that some are more willing to believe than others. It looks like he has brought a number of his friends with him today, and it warms my heart to see him again. I only wish everyone responded in this way. And of course, there's Lazarus and his friends from Bethany. My good friend has never been that far away from me ever since the day I brought him back from the dead. When he fell sick, his sisters Mary and Martha sent the word to me at the River Jordan. And when I arrived at Lazarus' home, he had already been dead for four days. It hurt me to see Mary and Martha grieve at Lazarus' grave. But I raised Lazarus from the dead that day, and I hope they will always remember the tremendous joy on his sister's faces, that faithful hope that became a reality. And today it brings me joy to see Lazarus enjoying the life that has been given to him. As we come toward the city walls, a few of the disciples have noticed the tears coursing down my cheeks and thinking they are tears of joy. It seems only the donkey's colt beneath me senses my anguish. I do not blame them, for they do not understand what I have tried to make clear for them, but that understanding will come soon enough. My friends, I wish you could be saved from the darkness of the next days, the days that are filled with the denial and the dark plots of betrayal. And Peter, strong, dear Peter, were you to have it your way, that which will transpire these next days will not take place. I'm sorry I have been so harsh with you, my friend, but I could not allow you to stand in the way of the path of God. You would not believe it, but you who would protect me from all the harm will soon desert me to avoid sharing my fate. Is there none who will share this burden with me? And then there's Judas. Already you have begun to test which way the wind will blow. Knowing the part you will play in my death, I should probably hate you, but I cannot. If it were not you, it would be another, and many more after you in the ages to come. We have become like a family, all of you, and I, and it saddens me to think of your grief and your loneliness as I leave you. Some of you will feel disappointed and cheated, perhaps even as I die painfully on the cross. James and John, who once were so bold and confident, my lot you would share if you could then in glory sit at my right and my left. You too will feel cheated of that which I have promised you. For then you did not fully understand the cup I drink nor the baptism I am baptized with. But later, you will no longer be alone. But if I spare you this time, I will ask that God give you another counselor to be with you forever. I will not leave you as orphans, but I will come to you, remembering it is my peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Friends, some of the Pharisees and the other religious rulers have now joined the crowd and they're waiting at the gates. They're questioning the onlookers, no doubt looking for an excuse to arrest me. Just a few days, friends, and the ones I love will deliver me right to you. I have sympathy for you, for your self-righteousness, because of all your laws you've missed the Son of God 
because of all those laws you try so hard to obey. Some of you will know it deep inside of you that when the time comes, it will be too late. As anger begins to burn within me, I see the fear in the eyes of the people as they near you. You think you serve God, but it is another who is your master. Everything you do is done for others to see. Woe to you hypocrites who shut the kingdom of heaven in the people's faces. You who are blind to your own wickedness. On the outside you appear as people who are righteous, but as the inside you are full of greed and hypocrisy. You are snakes and a brood of vipers. Look at what you have done to my father's house. You use this place of prayer for your greed. You're making it into a den of robbers and thieves. And as the wool scatters, I ask to come to me all who are weary and carrying heavy burden, and I will give you rest. Now the blind and the crippled may come to me, and I will make them whole. Learn from me, and I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest in your souls. As I listen to that beautiful sound of the voices of children shouting Hosanna to the son of David, it doesn't matter whom their shouts bother, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to children such as these. Anyone who will receive the kingdom of heaven like a child will enter it. Lord, this day has been tiring, and we have returned to Bethany for the night. But God, I cannot sleep. I am exhausted by the events on this long and difficult day. This turmoil within me will hold back my sleep as I know the time has come. O oh God, comfort and sustain me as each day brings us closer to the cross. Please let me feel you near me. Fill me with your strength so that I do not turn back from the road that I willingly chose to follow so long ago. Today my heart felt crushed and broken within me as I viewed Jerusalem, as I thought about how the people have prayed for this Messiah and how blindly they have not recognized that I have come. Oh God, I pray for those you have given to me. I will not remain in the world much longer, but they are still in this world. How I yearn to spare them from the destruction. Protect them by the power of your name so that they may be one as we are one. I pray these now while I am still in this world so that they may have the full measure of joy within them. As you sent me into this world, so I send them. Give me faith to keep believing that I have sown with seeds that will bear fruit. How discouraging it has been to even see my disciples not understand, to keep teaching, to keep explaining that which I had hoped would seem so clear to dismay and confusion that I know the words of sacrifice and death bring to them. God, help me to gently show them that this is the way, your way, the way in which all people may be made right with you. And God, you know my prayer is not for the disciples alone. I pray for those who believe in me through this message, that all of them may be one as you and I are one. I have given them the glory that you gave to me. I am in them and you are in me. May that day be brought to complete unity, to let the world know that you sent me. And I love them even as you have loved me. Lord, your thoughts and your feelings, they continue to race through my mind, the awareness of insincerity and fickleness of the crowds. The crowds who today have crowned me as their king will join others at the day, at the end of the week, and they will shout for my crucifixion. The anger and indignation I felt so strongly as I saw your house of prayer turn into a market fate, place to fatten the purses the price of the robbing of the poor who have come to worship you, the needs that would consume me, the blind and the crippled who again came to me for healing, the confusion, the concern, the anxiety, even each day brings them and I closer to the cross. 
God, for all these feelings, I need your calming spirit. Envelop me with your presence. Help me again to hear your encouraging voice as it strengthens me and fills me with your peace. My God, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Amen. this table remembering blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord Jesus gathered us and gathers us into his beloved community and feeds us in order to strengthen us for the journeys that we have ahead come and join with Christ in this holy supper and be fed with one heavenly food as we come together and we say the prayer of Thanksgiving the Lord is with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks to the Lord our God. Children of God, rejoice. Sing out in celebration for God's people. Your King is coming to you, humble, riding on a donkey. Hosanna! Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Say it with me. Hosanna. Say, I want one loud, loud shout. Hosanna. Thank you. <laughs> Lord God, you loving parent and friend. God, you deserve our worship, our love, our devotion, because you have entered into this broken world and you have joined us on this journey, this journey that is filled with pain and pleasure, this journey that is filled with sorrow and joy. You have given us access to life, eternal and abundant, and we lift our praises to you, God, and we celebrate you coming to us, not with political power or military might, not with glamour or fame or wealth, but coming to us with humility and with love and with gentleness and with great compassion. So we lift our voices and we praise you, O oh God. 
Christ, we recognize your life among us as one of sacrifice. You came and you confront the hatred, the fear, the violence, the evil that is within us. That you seek to overthrow the tables of greed and injustice. Forgive us, God, when we resist your coming. Forgive us when we reject you. You, when we reject you and when we seek your silence, when we seek to silence your transforming and challenging influence, God, we ask that you have mercy on us. God, do not cease to come to us and call us to life. Define love. We open our ears to hear. We open our hearts to receive, God. We bring the needs of this world broken by divisions and suspicion, broken by hatred and broken by war. We bring you the needs of our land, the hungry, the homeless, the wounded, the despairing. We bring you the needs of ourselves and our loved ones who are seeking your peace and your healing, who are seeking your wisdom and your protection. Hear us, O oh God, and come to us in compassion and in love and rescue us and restore us and make us a people in whom your gentle reign is seen. The Prince of Peace fills us with God's presence and is with us always. Let us open the gates of our hearts to our sovereign God of glory so that God can come in. Let us lift our voices in praise and thanksgiving to God who deserves all our honor and blessing. Friends, it is a privilege and it is a joy to exalt God in every place and in every moment. And we offer this worship to God through Christ Jesus our Lord, who came to us humbly, riding on a donkey. The Lord Jesus, who on the eve of his death shared a meal with his friends and his followers, he took the bread, gave thanks, and he broke it. And he offered it to them, saying, This is my body broken for you. Remember me whenever you eat. And he took the cup and he blessed it and he poured it out and he gave thanks and he offered to them, Friends, this is my cup poured out for you. Whenever you drink of this cup, remember me. So now we eat and we drink in the memory of Jesus Christ and his great love. And in this simple meal, we proclaim his death and his resurrection, giving life to all people. Friends, these are the gifts of God for us, the people of God. All are welcome to this table. After they had eaten together, they prayed together. Let us also pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming to us once again through this simple meal of bread and wine, for nourishing our bodies and our souls, for filling us with hope as we look forward to this eternal banquet. And we pray the prayer that your Son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, let us give thanks to God for God is good. And God's steadfast love endures forever. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of Hosanna in the highest heaven. Let us sing praises to our God. With all creation we cry out for joy. Jesus fulfills God's promise to us. Hosanna to our blessed Savior. Amen. <laughs> 